Amen. Amen. Okay, I think it's working. I think we're live. All right, all right. Let's let's check it out and see. There we are. Awesome. All right, let's share that in there. All right, all right. There we go. Amen. Well, uh, we're here on a Thursday night for a Thursday night Bible study. Amen. Here on Facebook. And uh, this is Pastor William Webb, uh, Webb the Cross Baptist Church in White Pine, Tennessee. And uh, we're coming to you here tonight on Facebook, uh, back in my own house uh, on Facebook. Last week I had to go over to my parents' house. Uh, I was driven out of here. Yeah, ma'am. But no, uh, I had to go over there. Uh, they were mowing here, so uh, I had to, had to go somewhere where you could hear me. Yeah, ma'am. But tonight we're back over here, so... Uh, we're going to get into the Word of God here in a minute, and uh, we'll give some folks just a, just a few minutes there to get online. There's a Nikki. Good evening there, Nikki. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll get some more folks in here in a second, I'm sure. Uh, be in prayer for Sunday. Go ahead and remember, once again, Sunday we'll be back. Uh, we're trying to get everybody back in the rhythm of things. We'll be back in, in the church service, uh, Sunday school, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, and then uh, uh, Sunday uh, worship service will be at 11 so uh, don't forget about that and uh, there's mom watching there and several more folks now joining online so don't forget about those things coming up uh, this week amen coming up on Sunday amen we're excited to be in the house of the Lord amen there's dad all right all right well uh, if you want to go ahead and get to turn in your Bibles, we'll be uh, in the book of Genesis still. When this week we, we're going to hit chapter number 10. We finished chapter number 9 last week, and uh, we're going to get into chapter 10. And uh, my goal tonight is to finish chapter 10. It's 32 verses long, which uh, sounds like a lot of verses, but when you get into the reading of the chapter, uh, you'll find that uh, we've got a lot of genealogy we're going to go through, and a lot of it... Uh, I'll explain a little bit more as we go through it. A lot of it we're not going to hit as intently as we've hit everything else. We ain't going to really dissect a whole lot uh, in that. So, uh, so we'll just uh, see as the Lord leads tonight and, and uh, try to help you in some way out of this chapter. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and then we'll begin the Bible study. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to do this once again. We thank you for your word and what it means to us. And God, we pray that you'd use us tonight. Help us to say something that would help your people. Help us to uh, just uh, strengthen your people tonight, dear Lord. And help us to get in your word and be able to expound upon it and be able to understand it the way you'd have us to understand it. In Jesus' name, and amen. Amen. All right, all right. Let's, uh, let's get in here. Genesis chapter number 10. Now, what say, preacher? What's going on? Well... To catch you up, amen, we have uh, went through the flood, amen, and Noah and his family, they've got off the boat, amen, they've got off the ark, and uh, uh, we saw last week, we came to the conclusion of Noah's life. Noah uh, said Noah lived after the flood 350 years, and said all the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died, amen, so uh, we got to the end of Noah's life, uh, but we can't forget, and this is kind of going to be the whole theme of tonight, we can't forget there was still humanity to be lived. There was still um, a life to be lived, amen, further than Noah's life. Noah was not uh, the only one, amen. And so uh, without, uh, without Noah, I want you to remember this, without Noah and without chapter number 10, you and I wouldn't be here. You and I, uh, we, we all stem uh, from Noah's three sons, amen, and we're going to look at that uh, tonight. Uh, verse number one of chapter 10, let's go ahead and hit that real quick. It says, now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and unto them were sons born after the flood. Now, let me say this, I kind of just hit this already, but this is, this is, this verse really uh, it sets the backdrop. It sets the uh, scene for this entire chapter for everything we're going to look at tonight. This verse sets it. Uh, uh, Noah, Shem, uh, Noah's sons were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Amen. And, and all of mankind 
came from these three men, okay? All of mankind, uh, all of mankind as we know it, amen, comes from these three, uh, uh, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, amen? Uh, so let me say this. Say, preacher, what has that got to do with anything? Why is that important? Let me say this to you tonight. That proves God's word, uh, and that proves God's seriousness, amen? Uh, we mustn't forget the reason that we all come from these three fellows right here, amen, is because of the flood, is because of what, uh, of, God, of God's judgment upon the earth, amen, and what he did, amen. Uh, let me say this to you tonight and get a hold of this. God's serious. God is, uh, God's a serious God, amen. We, we like to cut up and, and have fun down here, and I don't think there's anything wrong with cutting up. I don't think there's anything wrong with having fun, amen, but uh, we got to get serious too. We got to get serious with this thing, uh, friend. Uh, uh, one day, man, uh, that flood. Is, what is an example of? It's an example of what God's uh, going to bring about the judgment upon this world, amen. Now, if you and I are saved, amen, we're going to be, uh, 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 we'll be in the uh, ark, for lack of a better term, amen. We're we're saved by grace through faith, amen. We're not going to uh, suffer through uh, the tribulation and the judgment that God's got coming to this earth, amen. But a lot of folks are living like that ain't coming, amen. Uh, this proves to us that. Uh, God's serious. When God makes a claim, God's serious. God keeps His word, and and He, he and you'll find in the Word of God, He always keeps His word. Okay, so uh, remember that tonight. All of mankind came from these three sons, and that's important to note because there was nobody else. <laughs> Amen. That there was nobody else. Why? Because God was serious. God kept His word. Amen. Now, let me say this about chapter ten. Let me say there's about. Uh, three ways that we could study this chapter. Uh, we could uh, go on the low end of the spectrum and just read it, <laughs> amen, and, and, and read through it and, and say we're going to go 90 miles an hour and we'd be done in 10 minutes, okay? Uh, some, of you, some of you that are really true Baptists, you'd love that, <laughs> amen. But, uh, uh, and then there's an extreme spectrum. We could get in and each and every name, we could try to pin down every... Uh, significance that there ever was to each and every single name in, in chapter number 10 and probably spend, uh, I don't know, probably a month in chapter number 10, okay? A month at, 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 at 30, 45 minutes a week uh, would probably take us that long if we really wanted to hit everything uh, and in it. Uh, so I want to hit somewhere in between that, okay, is what I want to do. Uh, we're going to kind of go at this. We've kind of went that other things that uh, kind of with, you know, with that uh, microscope really close in there and looking at things and looking at each and every detail uh, of the verses. Uh, this is more with, with these genealogies, and we'll see this also, a little bit less we'll see this in, in Genesis 11, but we're going to see this some more in Genesis 11. But uh, with these genealogies, we're going to hit this a little, we're going to kind of put the microscope aside uh, for most of these verses and just kind of hit them and just take them as they are. Uh, the reason for that is because as, as far as the grand scheme, the grand story of the Bible, that this, this text is, is significant, don't you get me wrong, amen, but it's not going to uh, have a lot of uh, playback on us. Let me say it like that. It's not going to have a lot of, hey, remember when we talked about some, there's some of these, well, some of these will have that, but a lot of these won't, okay? A lot of these are just, uh, it's just historical context for you and I uh, to grasp hold of, Okay. So uh, let's get in here. Look at verse number two. We're going to read verse number two down through verse number five. It says, The sons of Japheth. Now I'm going to pronounce a good 90% of these wrong. Okay. Uh, Gomer and Magog and Madai and Javan and Tubal and Meshech and Tyrus. And then it says, And the sons of Gomer. That was one of Japheth's sons. Uh, Ashkenaz and Ribfath and Togamar or, or Tugamar, Tugamar, tu, Togarmah, maybe that's how it is. And the sons of Jabin, that's another one of uh, Japheth's sons. Elisha and Tarshish, Kittim and Dodanim. And it says, By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. Now, let me say this. It tells us that Japheth's people are, are, are the Gentile people. It's where the Gentile people come from, okay? 
This is uh, uh, where, where the Gentiles come from. Now, say preacher, I, I, I just don't understand the importance. Why are you stopping here and telling us that? Let me say this very plainly to you tonight. Amen. Uh, learning about the Gentile people and knowing where the Gentile people come from is extremely important. Is extremely important. There's two reasons I really uh, want you to know, amen, uh, that that learning about Gentile people is extremely important. Say, preacher, what is that? Uh, well, number one reason you need to go read uh, Ephesians chapter number two, amen, where the Gentiles are drafted in, amen. Uh, it tells us about that. Uh, uh, they're, they're grafted in through uh, what Christ did on the cross, amen, and, and Christ did that for all. He, he died on the cross for all. There's no difference, friend. Uh, but let me say this. Num the number two reason I believe it's important for you to note uh, some information about Gentiles is I dare say 90% uh, of folks, I, I can about probably guess for sure about everyone watching tonight at this exact time, but folks that may be watching in the future, I can't say for everyone, but I would dare say uh, just because of the demographic of people that uh, I associate with and know uh, just by default uh, that it's important for you and I to know about the Gentiles because uh, you need to go look in the mirror. Then you'll realize what the importance of the Gentiles are, okay? You'll, you'll understand that. Say, so, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this, you and I, amen, if you're, if you're not of Jewish descent, amen, uh, you, you are a, a Gentile, amen. That, that's what the phrase means. That's what the word means, amen. You're not Jewish, amen. Uh, uh, and I'm not, amen, and, and, and like I said, I dare say, uh, I, I, I honestly, in, in my head, trying to think right now, um, I don't know if I, if I, if I personally, myself, I mean, I'm sure, I know, well, I know there's people out there, uh, I don't know if I personally know anyone uh, that is of Jewish descent, uh, but anyway, uh, let, let me say that to you, um, that, that learning about the Gentiles, amen, uh, we can kind of, JPS only got I mean, what, four verses in here, really, on, on the grand scheme of the whole thing of this chapter number 10. Uh, but you need to pay attention to that because that those four verses uh, have a lot of impact on you and I, amen, on who we are, amen, because we are uh, the Gentiles. We are not, uh, 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 if you're, if you're uh, not Jewish, amen, you're, you're, you're not uh, a Jew, amen, simply put, amen. Now, I want you to notice one thing real quick uh, in these first uh, uh, couple of verses here. Uh, verse number four, I hope you, if you've studied your Bible, I hope you recognize something out of verse number four at least. Uh, verse number four is, talks about the sons of, uh, of Javan, and, and notice the second one. It says Tarshish. Now look that up. Uh, that does correlate back, amen, or, or uh, in the future this will correlate back to this, amen, uh, from where uh, Jonah runs off to, amen, when, when, when Jonah is told to go to Nineveh, uh, God tells him to go to Nineveh and cry against that city, and Jonah says, no, I'm going to go to Tarsus, amen, and that's, uh, that, that is where we get that from, so you just keep that in your mind tonight, uh, that's just something to note there, uh, so don't forget about that, and don't forget about Nineveh either, because we might talk about that, we might talk about that in a minute, amen, so uh, let's keep on reading, amen, look at verse number six real quick, look at verse number six. It said, in the sons of Ham, now we've went through Japheth, and now we're going to look at Ham. It says, Cush and Mizram and uh, Phut and Canaan. Now, Canaan, I, 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 if you were here last week, or you watched the video last week, or if you've read your Bible, probably any, even in the Old Testament, uh, the, the, some uh, little alert in your head should have just went off, amen, when I read uh, that word Canaan, amen. Don't forget, look, uh, let's look back in chapter number 9, the curse that came about, amen, uh, came by way of Noah, but uh, we know it was of the Lord, amen, uh, just prophecy of the Lord, amen, but when, when Noah was uh, putting that curse on him uh, all the way even back in, in chapter number 20, or not chapter number 22, but verse number 22 of chapter 9, it says, and Ham, the father of Canaan. Amen. And then in verse 25, and he said, Cursed be Canaan. Verse 26, it said, and Canaan shall be his servant. In verse 27 of chapter 9, it said, and Canaan shall be his servant. Amen. So uh, uh, there's some significance there. Amen. We see that coming to, uh, coming to light here. We've been told already that 
uh, uh, that Ham was uh, Canaan's father, amen, and we see in this, it, the Bible points it out to you and I uh, once again, amen, and it is important to note that, and uh, and we'll get we'll get on that uh, in, in just a few minutes, okay, we'll get, we'll get back on uh, Canaan. Now look at verse number seven, we're going to talk about uh, uh, Cush here for a second. Uh, this is interesting. It says, And the sons of Cush, Seba, and uh, Havilah, and Sabta, and Rama, and Sabtecha, and the sons of Rama, Sheba, and Dedan. Notice verse number 8. I want you to see verse number 8 in this. It said, And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. It said he was a mighty hunter before the Lord, wherefore it is said, even as the Nimrod, the mighty hunter, before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erech and Akkad and Kalna in the land of Shinar. Out of that land went forth uh, Asher and builded Nineveh and the city uh, Re Re Rehoboth and Kala and reason between Nineveh and Kala, the same is a great city. Now, let's stop there. Let's stop at uh, verse number 12 real quick. Uh, there's some things in here I want you to see. Number one, uh, now let me say this. I've said this since I started teaching uh, this at the church and uh, teaching teaching in general. When Any time I go through teaching something, I always like to say it's I don't know everything. Okay, uh, bottom line, I don't. Um, and this is kind of one of those things where I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't know. Because Bible don't tell us. Uh, but Nimrod. Let's talk about him for a minute. Nimrod is mentioned in here. And Nimrod is the first of anyone so far in this chapter that is given more than a, just a name. Okay? is the first person, amen, uh, aside from the sons of Noah who we already know about. And we, we've, we've learned a little bit about them at the end of chapter number 9. Nimrod's the first person in here that uh, we, we're given any detail on. Okay? And let me say this to you. Say, preacher, what's the deal with Nimrod? I don't know. I, I, I don't know uh, the whole deal with Nimrod. Nimrod's only mentioned one other time in the entire Bible, and that is in, uh, let me see, I wrote it in 1 Chronicles uh, chapter number 1. And the, and in over there in 1 Chronicles chapter number 1, it says the same thing that it says here. Let me let me turn over there real quick and, and, and get to you on that. Uh, uh, in First Chronicles chapter number 1, you ain't got to turn here, but let me turn here and read it to you what it says about uh, Nimrod real quick, real quick. First uh, Chronicles chapter 1, and verse number 10, it said, In Cush, beget Nimrod, and said, he, he began to be mighty upon the earth. Uh, so we really don't get a, a, a lot of detail as to why Nimrod is pointed out uh, or, or kind of highlighted in this. Um, went to a Bible study one time and it was uh, we speculated and that's all you can do when when the Bible doesn't tell you let me let me throw this out there tonight and this will help a lot of you uh, 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 when you if you if you run across arguments or something uh, uh, foolishness is what it is but it's a help you with that uh, if the Bible does not tell you and doesn't have an answer for you anything you give is just going to be speculation Okay, anything you can come about from that. If the Bible doesn't say one way or another, then it's just speculation on your end, okay? So, uh, throw that out there. Now, we, we kind of speculated that maybe Nimrod, uh, that maybe he was the first one that was a mighty hunter upon the earth, uh, since the Bible tells us that, that maybe this came about through him. This was the, the first uh, real uh, mighty hunter, amen, uh, as the Bible says. I don't know if he was the first. I don't know it, but the the Bible does make note to mention him. Now, let's use some just logic, okay? Let's just use a little bit of logic in our daily lives. Um, I, I dare say that anyone watching this video or ever has ever heard the word Nimrod. Uh, I, I pray tonight <laughs> that you have not been called a Nimrod at some point but should you have been called an Imran at some point it was probably because you done something uh, that was not very smart <laughs> Nimrod uh, uh, just in uh, the, the way we hear it amen uh, this like I said this, it's, it's only in the Bible three times two times right here in chapter 10 and then over there in first Chronicles uh, 
but we associate that with a, a dumb person, I guess, uh, somebody that makes a dumb decision, amen, uh, uh, the, for lack of a better way of explaining it, amen. But let me say this, keep this in mind, Nim, Nimrod has mentioned what he is, but don't forget this, he's still a son, uh, or a uh, grandson rather, but it, we, we will, for, for lack of that, we'll just say son, because uh, that's how the Bible puts it, he's still a son of Ham. Okay, he's still he's a second generation. He's two generations away from Ham, Amen. Who the curse was upon? Okay, and now now let me let me say this to you. From uh, you'll find this often in the Word of God. From wickedness never comes righteousness. From wickedness righteousness does not come. You'll never find in the Word of God where wickedness is present. And then righteousness is birthed out of wickedness. Okay? There is wickedness. Uh, but righteousness will come. Uh, now, let me say this. Uh, repentance exists. And repentance is a change. Repentance is a change of mind. That's what the word repent means is change of mind. Amen? Uh, so repentance is a change. Amen? It's something that is wicked. Amen? If you're saved tonight, at some point in your life, you was wicked. <laughs> amen? Simply put, uh, you were... Uh, lost and you wicked and yet in your sin, amen. But through repentance, amen, you're saved and on your way to heaven if you're saved tonight, amen. Uh, so let me say that wickedness can become righteousness through repentance, but wickedness itself will never birth righteousness, okay? You'll never l l get a hold of that tonight. Uh, you, uh, uh, a drug addict somewhere or whatever will never birth righteousness okay the, the the use of drugs it won't birth righteousness you won't find righteousness in that uh and uh you can go on down the line and drunkenness you ain't gonna you're not gonna have a revival let me just help you tonight you'll never have revival at the bar you'll never have revival revival uh, uh shooting up with a needle in your arm you'll never have revival amen uh, uh, popping pills or whatever, friend. You, you won't have revival like that. You won't have revival shacking up. Amen. You, you won't. Amen. That, why? Because wickedness cannot birth righteousness. Amen. That's why in Joshua chapter 7, it was time to get the sin out of the camp because the wickedness was not birthing righteousness. It was holding back the righteousness. Okay? Wickedness in your life will hold back righteousness. And that's another uh, 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 story for another, another time. But... Let me say this with Nimrod here. He, he's birthed from wickedness, from Ham, from Ham's people. Now, I want you to notice what comes from Nimrod. Just a few things I want you to, it's directly correlated back to him. It said in the beginning of his kingdom, verse number 10, notice this. The beginning of his kingdom was Babel. Now, take that, take that, you grab hold of it and Put that right in the back of your head and just stew on it. Just stew on that. Stew on Babel to next week, okay? You stew on that to next week. But it said in the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. It said in Eric and Akkad and, and Kalna in the land of Shinar. And it said out of that land went forth Asher and builded Nineveh. Amen. We got that? Nineveh. Amen. Nineveh is uh, the main subject in two books of the Bible, in Jonah and I, I believe it's Nahum. Uh, uh, you might want to go check that for sure. Uh, we won't check it for a second time tonight, but I'm pretty sure off the top of my head, I know for, for a fact Nineveh, Nineveh is the main focus of Jonah. Amen. But uh, I believe the book of Nahum uh, is also uh, mainly focused on Nineveh. And Nineveh, both times, both books, amen, in the Bible were, that are concerned with Nineveh, they're not concerned. It's not concerned about how righteous Nineveh is. It's always concerned about Nineveh turning from their wickedness. Amen. It's a, a city that is always dealt with wickedness. Once again, let me say this to you. Uh, 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 wickedness and, and wickedness will not birth righteousness. Okay. Uh, Nineveh gets right with God in Jonah. Jonah chapter number three, they get right with God. You know how they get right with God? Go read Jonah chapter three sometime and it'll bless your heart. 
Amen. They get right with God. Amen. Through repentance. Amen. They sit in sackcloth and ashes. Amen. They sit, uh, and which in the Old Testament, that's a state of repentance is what that is. Uh, so, friend, uh, but once again, you find in the book of Nahum, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's Nahum, uh, uh, but you, you find in the book of Nahum that uh, they, they end up in the same situation, okay? They, they end up in the same situation of, uh, of wickedness, amen? And, and uh, if my memory serves me right, uh, that book ends with them still being in the same situation of wickedness, amen? So, uh, uh, get a hold of that tonight. Wickedness cannot birth righteousness, okay? It won't bring forth righteousness. You will not get righteous things out of wicked devices. Let me put it like that. You won't get righteous things out of wicked devices. Okay, okay, notice that. Now, let's move on. Let's move on to verse number 13. Verse number 13, look at this. And it said in, in, in Mizraim, we, we've heard him before, right? He, he's one of the sons of Ham, so we're going down the line. He beget Ludum. Uh, and An Anamim and Lehabim and Naphtahim and Pathruzim and Kaluzim, out of whom came Philistim and Cathtorim. Now let me stop real fast and just hit this. Just just boom. We'll hit it real quick. Uh, another thing that, that we looked up and that we, the all signs point to, where it says, "Out of whom came uh, Philistim?" That's talking about the Philistines. Okay. Uh, that that's that's where uh, you'll find in the Word of God the Philistines come from. We know uh, uh, if you've studied your Bible ten minutes, you know about the Philistines. You know where uh, Goliath came from. Amen. He's a champion of the Philistines. So uh, always an enemy to God. Always an enemy to God. Amen. Once again, righteousness, or wickedness won't birth righteousness for him. Always an enemy to God. Now look at verse number fifteen. Get to verse number fifteen. It said in Canaan, there's the other son. Canaan, it says, and and Canaan beget Sidon his firstborn, and Heth, and the Jebusite, and the Amorite. Does that ring a bell? And the uh, Gergazite, and the Havite, and the Archite, and the Sinai, and the Arvadite, and the Zimmerite, and the Hamathalite, and afterward were the families of the Canaanites spread abroad. Now, let's put this in an easy way. A lot of those, we going, we're not, for sake of time tonight, uh, and just for the sake of the Bible study, we're not going to hit every single one of those, like, super close. Uh, really not even going to mention all of them. But, in studying your Bible, a lot of the things we just read about there, uh, from verses 15 through 18, uh, and, and going on through the Word of God, and what the children of Israel encounter uh, in their life, you're going to find uh, uh, the, the Amorites come up against them. You're going to find the uh, these folks, amen, uh, 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 that, that we've read in here, amen, uh, that they'll, they'll come up against them, amen. Why? Because they're descendants of Ham. God's, let me say it like this, or direct descendants of Canaan, amen, who was cursed, amen. Uh, God's word rings true. God's word always rings true. Even though that's nothing we, we look for and say, praise the Lord, oh my gosh, they're going to be enemies to Israel. No. They end up becoming, uh, they end up serving. The Canaanites end up serving the children of Israel. Amen. But let me say this to you. What, say, preacher, why is that? Because God's word rings true. Just about what we read in chapter number nine last week. Amen. You'll see that uh, uh, on down the line when you study your Bible. Uh, but let me say this to you. God, God's word rings true. God's word is the truth over and over and over again. Uh, all of these things, amen, you'll find throughout history, amen, it was right. Amen, these came from Canaan, amen. And Canaan was cursed, amen, uh, because of his father, amen, because of, of, of what Ham did, amen. So it said, and afterward, the families of the Canaanites spread abroad. There's a lot of them, a lot of them, okay. Now, uh, let me, let's look real quick at verse number uh, 19 and 20. Uh, just just hit this real quick because uh, you might recognize some things in here too. If you, you studied your Bible, you, you, you ought to recognize a lot of names in this. It said, And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, as thou comest to Gerar, unto uh, Gaza, as thou goest unto Sodom and Gomorrah, and Adma, and Zeboim, even unto 
Lasha, and these are the sons of Ham, after their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in their nations. Now, say, preacher, what do you mean? Think about, when I read this real quick, when I read that real fast, uh, three of those places mentioned in verse number 19, three of those places in verse number 19 are immediately, if, if you've read the book of Genesis, and we'll see it as we get through the book of Genesis, immediately, it'll, boom, and I'll go off in your head. Uh, that these are three places where bad things happen. Gerar, amen. Uh, Genesis chapter 20, we'll get there, amen. Uh, Abraham has a lapse at Gerar, amen. Uh, some bad things happen at Gerar, amen. Uh, I don't want to give away the whole story, but you go read it. That'd be some good reading for you. We'll get there in about a year, <laughs> amen, at this rate, amen. But but let me say this, uh, 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 bad things happen there. And then Lord have mercy, Sodom and Gomorrah, amen. Uh, you don't need to be even told the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. We'll get there sooner uh, than, than we'll get to Genesis 20. But, um, uh, friend, we know what happens there, wickedness in that city, wickedness, uh, while even uh, the phrase sodomy, that's where it comes from. It comes from Sodom. Uh, so so there, there's, no, there's no righteousness in there. Once again, I know I've said it 553 times tonight, but I'm going to say it one more time. Wickedness cannot birth righteousness. Wicked activity will not correlate to worship to God. Okay? It just won't do it. It just will not do it. Amen? And that goes a little bit further. Uh, uh, things that have the appearance of wickedness, they won't correlate to worshiping God. Get a hold of that. Put that in the... It just, just, you just put that in your backpack and pull it out someday so we see this it says uh, it says here uh, 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 that that uh, these are the sons of ham after their families after their tongues and their countries and in their nations we're going to hear a phrase uh, a verse almost identical to that uh, here in just a few uh, verses okay look at verse 21 unto shem also the father of all the children of eber the brother of japheth the elder, even to him, were children born. Now, we turn, and, and, and pretty much the rest of this chapter is concerning Shem. Okay, it's concerning Shem. Now, I, I, it almost I, when I read when I read verse twenty one uh, when I was studying this the other night, I, I almost, uh, if I'm being honest, I almost laughed. Uh, I, I, I I did a little bit. Because because hindsight's twenty twenty, right? We know everything. We know we know what Shem is. Shem is where the bloodline of Christ runs through. Okay, we know from Shem uh, is where we're going to get Abraham and on down the line uh, all the way through Christ. Okay, so Shem's bloodline it runs through Christ. And I think it's so funny. Like I said, hindsight's twenty twenty. We know these things, but verse twenty one. It's almost funny to read it. It said, "Even to him were children born." Thank God, thank God that even to Shem children were born. Amen. Thank God for that. Amen. That uh, that that might seem like a, a a a funny verse. Amen. It might seem like an odd verse to stop and say, well, uh, even to him were children born. What well, what does the Bible mean by Genesis ten twenty one, where it's even to him were children born? You ought to stop, really. Amen. When you read Genesis ten twenty one, and shout for a minute. Amen. That even to him were children born. It said there, talking about Shem, amen, because if it had not been, if even to him had not been children born, amen, there would be no Christ. There would be no Christ. That's where the bloodline ran through, friend, amen. There is victory for a Christian in Genesis 10, 21, amen. Don't tell me that these uh, chapters of genealogy doesn't have anything for you and I in them. They sure do. Even to him were children. It's almost, a, like I said, it's almost a comical statement to even read that after reading about all these. Uh, well, uh, here's Japheth's uh, many sons, and here's uh, Ham's many sons. Then the Bible says even even Shem had kids, <laughs> is what it's saying. But boy, it's 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 it's, it's astronomical in importance to you and I tonight. Uh, that that is uh, something right there. Praise the Lord, <laughs> Amen. That uh, uh, that Shem uh, had kids. He, that he had children born unto him. Amen. Praise the Lord for that, because without that, you and I would be stuck and lost with no hope and on our way to a devil's hell tonight. 
if it had not been for Christ, amen, who come through uh, the line, amen, all the way back to Shem. Okay? Okay, we, we, we'd be stuck with that. Now, I want you to look here and, and, and look through a couple of these with me. Let's get in verse 22 real fast. Verse 22. The children of Shem, Elam, and Asher, and Arphaxad, I'm guessing that's how you say that, and Lud, and Aram, and the children of Aram, Uz, and Hul, and Gether, and Mash, and Arphaxad, begat Salah, and Salah begat Eber. Now, uh, stop real quick. Uh, Uz, I want you to notice this. This, this blew my mind. This, this, this absolutely blew my mind. Uh, and and it, it, I guess it should, but still, it, it just, I just hadn't thought of it when, until I studied this out. Uz, now remember what we kept saying about him? Wickedness is not going to bring forth righteousness. Amen? Wickedness, because that was the wicked, as far as we read Genesis chapter 10, that's the wicked line, friend. That's, uh, Nimrod's come from that. Uh, Nineveh's coming from that. Uh, the Amorites are coming from that. All the Canaanites, obviously, we know that. So uh, uh, we, we, we know that. But here we're talking about Shem. This is, this, is, this is the line that is what? Go back to chapter number 9. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem. Amen. You know what comes out of the land of us? You know what comes out of the land of us? Turn your Bible. Amen. We'll get there uh, if, we, if, we, if the Lord leads us to go on through uh, the whole Bible after we get done with Genesis. Amen. We'll get there by the time I'm probably 50. But uh, in the book of Job, Verse number one of Job, it tells us that Job was of the land of us. Was of the land of us. Amen. Say, preacher, what do you mean? Job, the Bible is, is quick to point out to us, Job and, uh, Job and Noah are very similar in the way the Bible's uh, description of them are. Noah's description in Genesis chapter 6 is that he's a perfect man and walked with God. And walks with God. Uh, in Job chapter 1, the Bible tells us that Noah is a perfect man. Uh, that... Uh, um, and that is she with evil. Amen. So let me say this. From righteousness and from what is blessed by God will come more righteousness. You get a hold of that. Wickedness won't come from righteousness. Can I say that? Wickedness will not come from righteousness. If God's in it. Boy, I've been in church a long time. I've been in church my whole life. And, and let me say this. If God is in it, God will get glory out of it. God will get glory out of it. And that goes for everything. That goes for, uh, um, uh, say, preacher, I bless God, I wouldn't say this. I know you wouldn't. That's why God loved me to say it. Amen. So I can take the brunt of it. Uh, but a lot of folks, God ain't told them to say anything. They just like to talk. Okay? Uh, say, preacher, that's an awful ugly way to put it. It's just the truth of it, okay? It's just the truth of it. When God lays something on your heart to say it, number one, uh, you'll, it'll have to get out. It'll have to get out, but God will get the glory out of it. God will get the glory out of that. Friend, if God lays a song on your heart, and don't worry, I'm getting to the preacher. You give me a second. Say, preacher, you ain't going to talk about yourself. Uh, I'm getting to the preacher. God lays a song on somebody's heart, and they sing it uh, for God. God will get the glory out of it. Boy, I've, I've seen too many times in my life, and I, I dare say, uh, some of you saints of God that's been in this a lot longer than I have, you've seen it just as well as I have. A lot of folks get up to try to impress somebody in the church. Get up because, well, uh, I wasn't going to sing this, but so-and-so's here. Boy, that, that, mm, that gets under my skin uh, as pastor of a church. I'll be honest with you, that, that phrase. I wasn't going to sing this, but so-and-so's here tonight, so I'm going to sing. Well, then you ain't singing it for God if you're singing it for so-and-so. Amen. Uh, uh, say, preacher, I wouldn't say that. Well, that's all right. Just, just you, just listen. Amen. It's still truth. It's the truth. Amen. If God's in it, if God's in it, let me say this: If God is in it, God will get glory from it. Amen. If God is in it, it will glorify God. It certainly will. Amen. If it's if all that's in it is you. Amen. I, I've heard. Let me say this: I have, I have felt the presence of the Lord. Over somebody singing an old-fashioned song, amen, with tears rolling down their face and couldn't hardly <laughs> get through it. Amen. I, ain't, I ain't trying to be funny in saying that, amen. I, I felt the presence of the Lord in that. I've also seen them what take the microphone like this pen right here and they'll put it out there and, and look like a bunch of dummies, amen, uh, uh, and maybe sound great, sound great. 
Amen. But God ain't within 20 miles of it. God ain't within 20 miles. It's just a show. It's just a show. They're just performing. Amen. Listen, righteousness, things that God is in, God will get glory from it. Amen. God, uh, the, the, because of at the end of chapter number 9, Shem was blessed and his bloodline was blessed. Amen. Christ is going to come through his bloodline. But notice the difference in what uh, Shem begets and what and what comes from Shem. And, we're, and, and don't we won't get so caught up on this tonight because we're going to, uh, by default, have to look at this again in chapter number 11 when we get there. But what comes from Shem... Amen. Is righteousness. Amen. Uh, that land of us. Amen. That's where Noah, or not Noah, that's where Job was from. Amen. Job was from there. And Job said to be a perfect man that escheweth evil. Amen. Let me say this. Amen. Get a hold of that. And I, and I told you I, I'd hit the same thing on the preacher. Amen. The same thing about a preacher. Amen. Uh, you can tell. I, 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 let me say it, friend. If a preacher gets up and tries to give you a bunch of big words, Amen. Just to let you know how well he knows the dictionary. Amen. That's all good. And it might sound fancy and it might sound great and ever. Uh, and, and I'm not dogging preachers that uh, use uh, use big fancy outlines. I use an outline just about every time I preach. Amen. Just because I want to remember to uh, put down what, what God's told me to say. Uh, but you can have a big fancy outline that rhymes and, and everything's just perfect. And, and, and it, it just you know, wonderful as far as on paper. But if it's not what God tells you to say, and God might tell you to say that, don't you get me wrong. God might tell you. I've had several outlines. I, I joke around with a lot of my uh, uh, friends, and I'll say, well, I, I didn't preach with every point starting the same letter. I don't know if I preached right, you know, or something like that. I've got several outlines that do. Amen. Uh, that's how God's given it to me before. God doesn't always do that. God doesn't have to do that. God doesn't have to give you an outline. Let me say it like that. But friend, what I'm saying is, is if God's in it, it'll work. If God's in it, it'll work. God will get the glory out of it. If God ain't in it, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time with, with anything that you do. You're wasting your time if God is not in it. Amen. So get a hold of that tonight. Now look at verse number 25. Look at verse number 25. We got to we gotta go. I thought I'd be shorter than this tonight. <laughs> anyway. Look at verse 25. It said, And unto Eber were born two sons. The name of one was uh, Peleg, for in his days was the earth divided. And his brother's name was Joktan. Now listen to this fella. And Joktan beget uh, Almadad and uh, Shelephith and Hazar Maveth and Jerah and Hadaram and Uzzah and uh, Dikla and Oba and Abimel and Sheba and Ophir and Havilah and Joab. All these were the sons of Joktan. Uh, that man had 13 kids. Bless his heart. Amen. Look at verse number 30. Let's hit verse number 30. Amen. I don't know if there's a lot of significance in that, but we'll see. You'll see which ones, or, or, or really it's not him. We'll get to that later. You just won't worry about it. We'll, we'll talk more about Peleg later, okay? Not really Joktan. Uh, look at verse number 30. It says, And their dwelling was from Mesha, as thou goest unto Sephar, a mount of the east. And it says, These are the sons of Shem after their families, after their tongues, and their lands after their nations. Now, like I said, uh, it tells us the, the same setup that it gives us from Ham's people. Uh, it tells us where the dwelling was, where, where they stayed at, and then it says almost the exact same verse of verse number 20. I just put in Shem in there instead. These are the sons of Shem after their families, after their tongues, and their lands, after their nations. Okay? Let me point this out real quick in this verse. All of this that we've seen, we've seen that in this, God has made a difference between people. Notice what it said about Ham. After their families, after their tongues, excuse me, in their countries and in their nations. And then in verse number 31, and the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues, uh, in their lands. After their nations. God made a difference between people. Amen. That's important for you and I to note. And boy, Lord have mercy. I, I sure don't want to dive into that too deep tonight. Because you know exactly where that leads anymore in 2020 sadly. Amen. I'll have uh, somebody saying I'm a racist or something. Just because I'm talking about there's a difference in people. But it's, it's time we do realize that. 
that even in temp chapter number 10, God made a difference between people, amen? And I don't, I'm not trying to dive in on who was who and what was what, amen? I, we know that uh, 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 Japheth's people were the Gentiles. We know that, amen? We, we get that tonight. We, we know that. And these others, uh, 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 they were uh, primarily Jewish, amen? We know that. Uh, but let me, let me say this. God made a difference between us, amen? God, and, and still today, let me say this, friend. God makes differences between us. There are differences. There are no two people alike, amen? Uh, uh, they, just, they just aren't, amen? You, we, uh, that, that's just how it is, amen? So notice that that was God's plan. That wasn't God, God wasn't surprised by any of this. God, it was God's plan, okay? God knew what he was doing. God still knows what he's doing. Praise God for that. Look at verse 32 and we're done. It said, these are the families of the sons of Noah after their generations and their nations. And by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. Now, chapter number 10, that's a lot of people. We looked at a lot of people. Like I said, we didn't stop on every name because uh, I just tried to kind of hit the highlights basically of what we're going to hit later on uh, in, in, in Genesis, really. Uh, but uh, And, and kind of throughout the Bible as well. But... Uh, we, we didn't look at everyone, but let me say this. There's a whole lot. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people uh, that come. And remember, they come from those three. Come from those three. Kind of, uh, you kind of go back to verse number one. I, I like to do this. Read verse 32 and then read verse number one. Because verse number one says, Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Under them were sons born after the flood. And you get to verse 32 and it says, These are the families of the sons of Noah after their generations and their nations. And by these... By who? Those three sons were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. Amen. After the flood. After the flood. God set it up like this. This wasn't just how it ended up happening. God knew what was going to happen. Amen. And God set things up like this. And, and boy, we won't get into it tonight because I'm, I'm afraid, uh, one, it would take forever, and two, uh, I don't have the clearest understanding of it all. And it might confuse you, but uh, even prof it, there's even prophecy in chapter number 10 of, of things to come, amen, and of things that we haven't seen yet concerning the nation of Israel uh, and those things. But I'm, like I said, I'm not going to get into that, but you can kind of look at the territory of, of where certain uh, folks are positioned uh, even in, in today's day and age, amen, and, and how that concerns prophecy in the Bible. Uh, but we, like I said, we won't get into that tonight. But uh, let me say this. Let me say this. God's plan was for all this to happen from those three sons. From those three sons. Let me say this to you tonight. If I could leave you with one thought. I try to always leave you with uh, some type of thought. But let me leave you with this thought tonight. God's plan, it always works. God's plan always works. Let me say this. And you, you might think I'm crazy. If me as a preacher, as far as I can tell by looking at the folks watching, I think I've got maybe one, maybe two preachers watching with me right now. Uh, me as a preacher, if I preach every service what God has for me to preach, not what I want to preach, not what popular to preach, not what might sound more fancy than the other messages or whatever, if I preach what God has for me to preach, it'll work because God's plan always works. It might, they might not be throwing songbooks and, 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 and covering the altars, but somewhere down the line, it will work. It will be right. Amen. You can preach a message out of the Word of God and it not be what God would have you to preach and it'd be not God's will and it won't work. Amen. Say, preacher, how do you know? Trust me, I found that out through experience, through experience in my life. Okay, uh, I, I figured that out. But let me say this, friend, tonight. God's plan, as evidence right here and as evidence on and on throughout the Word of God, God's plan will always work. It always works. All right, all right. Well, we thank you for uh, tuning in with us tonight. Don't forget, like I said, there on Sunday we'll be at the church, uh, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock for Sunday school, Sunday uh, worship service at 11, and then we'll be there Sunday night for the Sunday evening service at 6 o'clock. So if you... Uh, don't have a home church, we'd love to have you with us, with, with us if I can speak tonight. And uh, uh, we, we uh, certainly would love that, and uh, uh, we'll get a blessing out of it. I'm sure you would. Lord bless you. All right. Have a good rest of the week, and uh, we will see you there on Sunday.